Well, a happy Sunday to you all. Good morning. So glad that you could be on today with us in this um, just special moment together. Just wanted to thank all of our uh, people who continually are on connecting, who are part of a live church family, and then anyone visiting for the first time, watching for the first time. We're thankful that you're here. You can connect with us further with some of the links below. You can see there some of our social media handles, website, uh, different ways to connect with us. So again, glad you're here. If this um, <clears throat> content is um, helping you and encouraging you, hit the thumbs up at any point in time. Go ahead and leave comments if you'd like. And we're going to jump in, but just wanted to open up with prayer today. Thank you, Lord, so much for another day. Thank you, God, that you are keeping us alive, that you're keeping us breathing, that you're keeping us in your hands. God, I pray that everyone would know who follows Christ, that they are a child of God, that you love them, you watch over them, you protect them. You are so concerned with them. God, and I just pray that you would help through every trial, through every circumstance that may look tough, that is tough. Um, and also, God, allow celebration to those who are going through uh, good seasons, Lord. We just thank you for your goodness and grace and mercy through all of life's journey. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, today I um, wanted to talk about the truth of the Bible. I know in the last couple of years I've talked on similar topics just because I think that the truth of the Bible has been, uh, for lack of a better word, attacked in the last couple of years blatantly more and out front maybe in, in the, the normal kind of conversation that media is having more than maybe other times than, than I've been alive. Um, I know that other countries and different places have had blatant um, attacks on the Bible, but I think for... America, at least since I've grown up, at least since I can remember, maybe as I was a kid, things were getting attacked more, but things seem to be getting attacked more just out front. Obviously, there's there can be things going on behind scenes and different things that we don't know about, but at least out front, it seems like the truth of the Bible has been attacked more and more. And one one movie I'm excited to go see when it comes out, it may have already come out, is the... Um, I think it's the Ark in the Darkness is what it's called. And it's going to share scientifically truth about why the flood and Noah's Ark actually did happen and how that all comes together into a true story. And so um, look it up if it's in your area. I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully seeing it. Maybe it'll stream soon and you won't have to uh, go out to the theater. But I know that we can ask ourselves... Um, the question, you know, is the Bible true? And for us as believers, of course, we say it's true, but I think it's good to have a firm foundation in these kind of times to help answer questions that people have them. Doesn't mean we have to like force anything upon them or yell and scream at them if they aren't believing in the Bible, but at least we have some conversation pieces. At least we have some truth in our, in our, um, artillery, so to speak, that we can provide and um, and bring to the table as true and know that it's true. And so just to start off with, um, is the Bible true or false? I think, of course, all of us, you know, who are, are Bible believers and Christ followers would say it is true. And I want to read 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, um, as I drink a sip of coffee because it's true that caffeine helps give you a kick as well. All right. So 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, this is the NIV version, says all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And now that applies to every believer, even though Paul's writing to Timothy as the man of God. This is something we can all apply to our life. All scripture is God breathed. 
that's pretty powerful in itself. God, um, when he speaks, things happen. We see that at the creation account. When he spoke, let there be light, light became a reality. So his words are powerful. His word matters. All scriptures God breathed, it's out of his mouth. And we're talking about the Bible this morning, of course, the word of God. And so that we can have a solid foundation that it is true and not some fictional story. If it is fiction, then we're, um, then we're worthy of, of pity. A quote says, and if it's truth, we must respect its truth and defend it as truth. And above all, live according to it. So there's no middle ground really with the Bible, which is not surprising. I think we either believe it's true or not. We either live by it or we don't. And that's obviously something we're working on as believers. And that's what we have to continually ask the Holy Spirit to help inspire us and give us grace and mercy. And that's why we have to keep reading it and keep digesting it and keep meditating on it because we want to do what it says. We want to live according to it. Second Timothy 3, 1 through 5 gives us kind of a context of the days that we're living in. And you may have heard me read this before, but I think it's so important that we nail this down. You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days, there will be very difficult times. How many would say there's been some difficult times, maybe in your personal life, obviously in, in the world in general, there's wars, there's rumors of wars, there's earthquakes, there's a lot of crazy things happening that people can feel like it's difficult times. And are these the difficult times that are like knocking on the doorstep of the end times. Well, the end times truly started when Jesus went back to heaven from dying on the cross to being buried to raising from the dead. We have been living in the end times, but it does feel like somewhat that we're getting closer and closer that there's those birth pains. Um, I don't know the day or the hour. The Bible says nobody knows the day or the hour, but God and so we have to live like it is the end and put an urgency on things in these difficult times. So you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be difficult times. For people will love only themselves and their money. So true. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. Man, Sometimes I find myself ungrateful for the situation that I can find myself in at any given moment. And I have to remind myself that that is not how a believer lives. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. Now, that doesn't mean we don't share the gospel with people like that, but it's really meaning not to, not to develop close relationships and friendships and be in one accord with people like that because it could pull you down. I think speaking of is the Bible truth, we're going to read some more scripture here so that we really understand what comes from the Bible, not just thoughts that I have. Romans 1, 16 through 32. So it's kind of a long one. This is the NLT version, New Living Translation. It's a little easier to to read and understand. For I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. Can we say that as believers? Most of the time, yes, we're not ashamed. But there's sometimes maybe we're ashamed or or, or um, maybe not ashamed, but just uh, afraid to share our faith. 
So for I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. That rhymes. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. But God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. It is, it's a horrible thing to be a person who is suppressing the truth by their wickedness. And we, of course, pray for all people, but when things are flat out, wicked, we have to take a stand and and reveal the truth and speak the truth. And of course, speak it in love, but, but still speak it. They know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. People will talk about God, but then do complete opposite of what God would want them to do. But they have no excuse. And that's the scary thing is they need to repent. They need to come to faith in Jesus Christ. Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. Claiming to be wise, they instead become utter fools. And instead of worshiping the glorious ever-living God, they worshiped idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. So God abandoned them to two to do whatever shameful things their hearts desired. As a result, they did vile and degrading things with each other's bodies. They traded the truth about God for a lie. So they worshiped and served the things God created instead of the creator himself, who is worthy of eternal praise. Amen. That is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even the women turned against the natural way to have relations and instead indulged in relations with each other. And the men, instead of having normal relations with women, burned with lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men. And as a result of this sin, they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserved. Since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that should never be done. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malice, malicious behavior, and gossip. They are backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud, and boastful. They invent ways of sinning, and they disobey their parents. They refuse to understand, break their promises, are heartless, and have no mercy. They know God's justice requires that those who do these things deserve to die, yet they do them anyway. Worse yet, they encourage others to do them too. We are living in, in such times, and it can be scary, but we know the truth. We're living in a day where there's an all-out attack on God and the Bible, and just want to take a look at a few things. Um, why, why people attack the Bible? They want to rule everything in their life. They're self-centered and self-pleasing. They want to rule all the affairs of their own life is one reason why. They don't want to submit to the, the standard of the Word of God. People do not want to be accountable People don't want their conscience of God to make them feel um, 
guilty. They want to get rid of their conscience and their and and the the conscience is connected to the Holy Spirit. If you repeat something loud enough and long enough, you can begin to believe it. And so if you continually tell yourself that something is right, something is right, you can believe it as truth. And then people try to get rid of the Bible because it tells of the nature of God. It tells who he is. And they attack it by attacking the stories. You know, the, like I said, the, the um, movie coming out about Noah's Ark, that's a famous story in the Bible that's true that a lot of people like to attack and say, you know what, maybe it wasn't a universal uh, global um, flood. Maybe it was regional or maybe, you know, it was just a metaphor of what was happening. But there's so many things in the Bible that people love to attack that are true that they love to come up with ideas of why it shouldn't be true. They love to attack the stories. They even attack the story of Adam and Eve and say, you know, it didn't really happen in the garden that way. Could a snake really talk? Could a serpent really talk? And all these types of things. They put doubt in the key persons of the Bible as, as God not doing miracles through their lives. They challenge certain miraculous events in the Bible. The creation of the universe, the flood, the Red Sea crossing, the fish that swallowed Jonah, and the list goes on. They attempt to, to find and magnify apparent what they think are contradictions in the Bible. They try to discredit the, the process that the Bible was inspired and interpreted um, in, in a wrong way. they 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 will even at times willingly abandon science to create a world where god is not necessary they bring up evolution which is a false science and many scientists even um non believers have defunct um evolution People will reject sinful behavior that's described in the Bible and rename them as medical conditions where there's no scientific evidence or support to their view. They'll justify themselves and shift blame to excuse sinful behavior, eliminating the need for a savior. And these are just some of the things that that people have attacked um, the Bible with in ideas. And of course, there's other things as well. And I just want to talk real quick on this um, because we'll wrap it up here soon. But what we believe about the Bible is that the Bible is a holy book. It's set apart for us. It means that it is God's word that he breathed it. All of God's word is God breathed. The Bible comes from the Greek word biblios, which means book. It's a holy book when in contrast to all the books of man. It is a holy book because the human writers were holy men of God. The Bible says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation for prophecy never came by the will of man, but the holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. That's Second Peter 1, 20 through 21. It's a holy book because it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's a holy book because it tells of the way in which sinful man may approach a holy God and how he might be made holy himself. There's only one truth. There's only one word that's true, and that's God's word. And he has made a way for us. And people love to excuse their, their failures, their sin, 
because they haven't accepted the way out of 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 that guilt and shame and so they just accept it and try to build upon this lie that it's okay to do this because I can't figure a way to stop doing this they don't know the savior Jesus Christ they don't personally know how much God loves them and how much he wants them to live according to his word and how much he desires that they be holy as he is holy. And again, that doesn't mean we're perfect, but we repent and we're forgiven of our sins. And then we're washed in the blood of Christ and our sins are forgiven. And we don't prescribe to a way that tries to excuse ourselves to live a certain way when God has asked us to live his way. And we're going to continue to dive into this more and more, but there's so much a need for believers to be word of God believers, to be based on the word of God. We're not just based on a feeling. Yes, it takes faith to follow Jesus, but faith is not just a feeling. It is, it is a hope in Christ. It is a hope in what he's done for us. It's a belief in in the word of God. It's, it's faith because we haven't seen the whole completion of it yet until he comes back to earth, but is still, it's faith based on the truth of God's word. And so I want to encourage you today to not be discouraged. Don't be dismayed when crazy things happen, when government officials make crazy decisions or deem things as right as though uh, even though they're wrong or deem things as wrong, even though they're right, do not get discouraged, but we need to continue to press in and strengthen our foundation on the word and ask more questions, uh, get together with one another or call each other and ask questions. Hey, what do you think this in the word, in the word means? This is what I've been studying or different things like that. We need to be encouraging one another in the word and in prayer, because we got to be strong in these kind of days. And I believe that we're going to be, um, I believe that very soon, it's, it's going to be even more black and white than ever. It's going to be even more God and our, our believers and unbelievers. And, and the, the line will be more distinct than ever. And we have to be ready for that, to take our stand on the side of, of we believe in God and his truth no matter what happens. And so we have to be those who take a stand, who preach the truth, who speak the truth in love, but we still need to speak it to its full truth, not water it down, not take anything out, not add anything to it. Because we believe the Bible is a holy book and we cannot, cannot forget that. I know it's kind of a, maybe more of a heavy moment to end a message in that, but I just want to encourage you that God does love you. The Bible says it time and time again. He loves us. He so much loved us that he sent his son into the world to take the punishment of sin for us. And he is our savior. Jesus Christ is our savior. And I just want to pray for us today as we close out, but just be encouraged today that the truth is the word of God. The Bible is the word of God. It is true. And you can stand on that in Jesus name. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for everyone who's watching here today. I just pray a blessing on every person who's watching that they would have a fresh understanding and a fresh revelation of how awesome you are of how amazing your word is and that you are the truth that you are the way the truth the life jesus and that no man comes to the father except through you and so we lean into your word we dive into it and we want to live according to it god the places that we don't understand it let us have new understanding or let us write down these questions and talk to one another about them and find god a fresh understanding in, in that way. I just pray a blessing over every person who's connecting today and that you would give them a clear understanding 
of your truth in these times that we live in. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Before we wrap everything up today, just want to um, encourage you, if you're first time with us, connect with us uh, in the links below. Also, if you uh, would like to give your tithes, your offerings, or a donation, there's a link below uh, where you can give at alivechurchnyc.com slash give. You can give securely and safely online. We give because the Bible teaches us that it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. But in all of that, when we give, we do receive because God pours out a blessing on our life that we can't contain. And so it really is, without making it sound like um, watered down or, or you know, kind of funny, but it is a win-win for us. When we give to God, he pours out so much more on us and we can never outgive him. And so a tithe is 10% of all that you earn. That's what a tithe is. It's a 10%. It's a 10th of everything you earn. An offering would be anything above and beyond that. And a donation is just something you feel in your heart to give. But we do believe wholeheartedly in tithing. And uh, my wife and I believe in that. We do that. We've done it for our whole marriage. I've done it since I was a young kid. And, um, and I've been taught in that way. And God always comes through when I've given um, even above and beyond or given my tithe, he's always come through. And so I encourage you today. Um, the Bible says to test God and see if he won't pour out a blessing on you so you can test him in tithing. Try it out. See if you see just his hand working in your life financially, but also in other ways as you put him first in your finances and in everything else as well. But with that being said, God bless you. Have a great rest of your Sunday, and we'll see you next Sunday.